Hey, May Zellers. Uh, a few weeks ago, I sat down with Dan Moody for him to have a little look into my PPC campaigns, which I had been neglecting in the last a while. Um, as you likely know, in Amazel, you can um, track the ranking of your uh, the product that you're selling across multiple keywords. And I could see in my own uh, uh, Amazel for my own listing that my uh, rankings were slipping, so I wanted to give it a bit of a boost. Um, and as you may also already know, uh, Dan created my original listing and the related keywords, so we had a good foundation from which to build from and improve my keyword performance. Um, in addition to uh, Dan's uh, listing building service. Dan also provides PPC uh, video clinic series, which is only $35. Um, there is a link uh, below the title of the video here, and um, so you can get more information about that. But without further ado, let, let us get into the uh, PPC session with Dan. Okay, so I'm here now with uh, with Dan, and um, Dan's joining me from uh, from Bulgaria, uh, which looks like it's almost as hot as it here in Berlin. And uh, he's been so kind to um, kind of do a little bit of a dissection of my uh, PPC in my own uh, listing. And um, uh, before we we go deeply into that, um, first of all. Um, I want to uh, I want to give a little background of uh, of what I've done so far, and then Dan can talk, give a little intro before we actually go into the numbers. So, um, oh well, also thank you, thank you for joining us, Dan. Um, and uh, yeah, so so I uh, launched my product in uh, January, and um, from from the outset, I ran. A, an automatic campaign for about three weeks, and then for a while I overlapped that with a um, with a more targeted campaign, and then created a third one, which was an exact match campaign. Um, and that has the you know there's been some reasonable results. Uh, we'll be able to see once again at the numbers that this is sort of uh, up and down. And um, yeah, and, and and so I think it'll be a good opportunity to have a look at the, uh, you know, the numbers and see what, what, what might be uh, possible to be improved. So, so um, Dan, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll let you take over from here and talk a little bit about what we're going to look at today. Okay, so um, we're, we're going to be taking a little look into the back end of of your of your pay per click stuff. Um, we're not going to be looking at the search term today. We're just going to be, you know, I'm going to have a look and see what I think we can improve on the kind of on the spot. What things we can pause and I don't know, maybe also um, like highlight a few things. Um, also, I, I can like I can share the usual. The structure the way I like to kind of silo things up um, and then also you know share my approach to uh, kind of to, to Amazon's pay-per-click thing as well and like one of the first things I wanted to wanted to say because obviously you've told me a little bit about uh, what you've done is um, I I like to start auto campaigns from the beginning I usually like to start an auto and abroad sometimes I start an auto and abroad and an exact and a phrase match to kind of almost like a survival of the fittest see who wins kind of um, refine from there I don't always recommend that but um, with the auto campaign you mentioned that you, you kind of use it to get keyword ideas as well and I always yeah. kind of like to say a lot of people um, a lot of people I guess uh, maybe not fans but a lot of people also talk about that approach and I'm I always like to say that I'm not a big fan of it because um, if your listing is you kind of don't know what you don't know and if your listing isn't well optimized or you haven't got good keyword research and then you start an automatic campaign um, you know without you find out the keywords. wrong things yeah or no, you might not find out much because I mean the algorithm 
you know, the keywords tell the algorithm what your product is, what things is relevant for. So if you haven't got as many good keywords in your listing as you should, you're not giving the algorithm as many signals and you're not, it's not going to pull in as many relevant results when it runs automatically. I mean, over time it can, you know, Amazon can squirrel out kind of anything, but in terms of using it for generating keyword ideas, I, I like to make sure I have all my ducks lined up beforehand and then whatever comes next is always, you know, like I said, I, I look at it less that it's going to give me keyword ideas, but more that, you know, if I do get any, then okay, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's fine. But, well, one thing I did find with the automatic campaign is that it, it brought kind of limited um, insights because there weren't actually that many uh, clicks uh, on, you know, the, the, there were a bunch of uh, keywords that, that it, it pulled in, but then there weren't that many clicks. So it didn't really clearly indicate which ones were converting and uh, I had much more success doing the uh, do kind of doing it myself and and really using actually the keyword list that you provided to me um, and starting from there and and then narrowing down yeah I mean usually some autos can in my experience they can usually either go one way or the other um, they tend to be either pretty good or you know, poor performance. You can you, you can improve that by adding the, you know, adding the bad ones into the negatives. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it, it's just a problem when people think they can run the auto campaign for a week or two, and then that's going to give them the keywords they need, which is kind of like reverse thinking. You need to know your golden keywords, or your you know, you need to know what your main mm -hmm. keywords are before. It's kind of like if you're going to write a blog post or do something for a website, you kind of need to know mm -hmm. your keywords before you write the post, as opposed to like let's find out um, <laughs> what people are interested in. <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah. like that basically. So uh, yeah, those are okay. just two things that I like to preface with. But in your case, we know the listing's good and the images are good. So we know that that's not a problem because sometimes poor pay-per-click results, poor conversions are a result of you know bad copy, bad listing, mm -hmm. bad price point, bad images. It can be a few things. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's then let's, uh, let's switch over to um, to my uh, to my seller central and uh, sorry about the inception there. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So guide me through here. Give me a, okay, so a the, dissect. The, dissect. The first thing we always do, which you've already done, um, is always like to change the date range to the lifetime results because. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in Amazon, you can see, um, you know, you can see it for for the day, for the week. I like to keep it lifetime because um, when you keep, when the time frame is too short, it kind of keeps you more reactive um, mm -hmm. in terms of like, you know, you might have just a bad day today, and you might be tempted to pause a keyword that that might be your best keyword over time historically, and you shouldn't mm -hmm. be you shouldn't be pausing it, but you'll panic because you'll see like today's tanked. And you just yep. have like a knee jerk response. Um, so it's always better to take a longer, um, a longer look at the data. And of course, when you get your campaign started, it takes a few weeks for things to kind of warm up. So that's also something worth worth keeping in mind when you have a new campaign. You should leave it for you know a week or two, really. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, try not to be too trigger happy. So right, we can see you've had a little dip um, on sales. Well, there's a massive dip over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a huge dip. Yeah, I'm having um, a bad month. <laughs> so you've got a huge ski slope going down, um, and yeah. then another one. Well, so, but I know that was because you said you had some negative reviews came in, and I mean, obviously that that does affect when you get negative reviews. It doesn't just affect sales; it can affect your pay per click performance as well because somebody's clicked when you paid for the click, and then maybe they were going to buy, but then they read that last mm -hmm. negative review and then they clicked away. So that causes yeah. a spend without a result. Yeah. So you're at an, a 54% ACOS at the moment, which isn't particularly good. No. Um, no. 30 is like the sweet spot okay. for me personally, but you know, okay, what are you going to do about it? Um, so let's have a look in the, if you scroll down a little bit, let's have a look at uh, your campaign structure. So you've got, you've got, um, an auto, a manual, and an exact. So 
usually like there's two ways you can structure your um structure your pay-per-click stuff depending on i mean I, it's personal preference the way i do it is i like to create a little silo and i put in usually not again not always but usually the way i'll structure it is i'll i'll have my keyword list anyway um and then i'll i'll create a campaign and i'll call it you know product x and then within product x i'll split that into product x broad product x phrase product x um what is it broad broad phrase and exact and basically i'll duplicate the keyword list in all three match types because um what a lot of people do is they'll start with broad which is which is good um, and then what will happen is they'll see the the best performing keywords in broad and then they'll either pause them and then move them to an exact campaign or you know if they're if they're smart they'll leave them running um because the logic is okay this is the best so i'll put this you know i'll mm -hmm. take this one and i'll pop it in exact but the problem with that is the different keywords well even if the, the same keyword can convert differently and perform differently uh depending on what campaign type whether it's a phrase manual or broad, they behave differently so the only true way to uh see what you know which one is the best is to let them run on all three match types and you can even again you can still keep an automatic running if you want mm -hmm. and then i turned go, it on for a day but then it just was it was just it was just leaking so i <laughs> yeah, turned well, it I mean, off I can, I can see the juicy a cost of 135 yeah. but i mean you can pause things um you know you can i i always i always prefer the manual campaigns generally but i let the autos run if if they're as long as they're performing well and i don't mind but um yeah, so it's important to remember that keywords behave differently. So, you know, you might have, you know, product X uh, stainless steel in broad might be fantastic, but it might be crap in phrase. And I always find, I don't know why, but phrase campaigns have always been the worst performers of anything in any campaigns I've run for okay. other people. Can you, uh, can you show me what you mean here in terms of phrase? Yeah, well, you've got an exact match, you've got a manual, um, a broad match, and a phrase match. So when you create your campaign, um, when you create your campaign, you choose the match type, and you've either got uh, exact, broad, or um, or phrase campaign. So it's just a, it's just another type of match. Okay, but what, you how are you seeing that phrase? phrase. I, I've no. called it automatic. No, no, you haven't. You, in this case, you haven't got a phrase campaign. You've got an exact, and you've got a broad. I was just saying that usually I create all three match types under uh, one okay. umbrella, and then I just let them all run, and I come in and pause things. But just as a, a note for, I don't know, for anyone watching, that phrase tends to be the worst mm -hmm. always. And I don't know why, but it just sometimes is. I mean, occasionally, mm -hmm. like some things will perform well. So in terms of coming into your stuff, let's go into. I mean, the first thing I think it would be good also to, you know, keep broads running as well because with broad you get the potential to with an exact campaign if you've got you know product x stainless steel it will only show for the exact match whereas with broad you've got the potential um the keyword might be you know product x stainless steel but in actual fact when we look at the search term report we can see lots of other things um you know you'll still be shown for product x stainless steel extra big or something like that there's other things that can um, get sucked in which is why broad can be quite interesting sometimes but okay. let's have a look at your exact campaign for the moment usually exact tends to get lower impressions um generally lower impressions. better conversion yeah sometimes sometimes i think the internet is as slow as everybody is moving today in the heat this is where your internet crashes mid uh... <laughs> okay so let's have a scroll down and click, click on here it. right yeah It's almost as good as my Bulgarian internet. Hmm. <laughs> okay. We go here. So, yeah, let's go into the keywords. Now, of course, you can't mention any of these keywords. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's going to be a challenge. It's kind of like a, it's like a fun game. Okay, so what you can do first of all, uh, which you couldn't do before, but you can do now, which is quite cool, is if you go over to the cell with uh, spend in it, 
and then click on spend it should it sh you can filter from top down and then click again and it should bring the ones with the highest spending so the first thing i like to pay attention to is um what keywords have resulted in a spend but with um you know with with no results so you can see your first couple of keywords that uh, shall remain anonymous are pulling in like 48 41 40 127 mm -hmm. um, 106 so that's a loser yeah they're kind of all losers but i would <laughs> maybe <laughs> i would maybe leave Thanks, um, I, would, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would maybe leave i would maybe leave the the second two maybe i would leave those i would leave those running and i would tweak the suggested bid maybe so they're just a bit lower so i mean instead of a dollar spend you could take that mm -hmm. one down to like 70 cents and then the 79 one maybe take it down to 60 just mm -hmm. to tweak that one a little bit and then i would pause the 127 one um i see you've paused that other naughty offender over there and then if you scroll down a little bit and um, if you roll down you see this is even the one underneath this is actually even worse because yeah. this there's is no sales, sales. yeah is you've spent 40 uh, 41 dollars and you've had no sales um so i would definitely i would pause that one um and then of course well, sorry you, you mentioned i should should i pause the first one yeah i think so i would pause that one i would also pause that fourth one as well yeah and um let's scroll down so again that 164 one definitely give that one the uh give that one the hammer i mean this could be because uh i've sort of gotten a little too generous Maybe <laughs> yeah. if I, if I... well i mean it's still there's still there's still the conversion rate is probably not super wonderful but i definitely i couldn't psychologically leave a 164 ACOS in there. Mm -hmm. I would maybe I would maybe retest them all on broad, mm -hmm. um, and then you know, and then go through the same thing. So I would pause that one, okay. and then the one underneath it, which is at forty one, I'd maybe leave that one. Mm -hmm. It's not too bad. I would tweak the um, tweak the bid a little bit, um, and then you've got one under there, which is it looks okay. You've got a twenty one percent ACOS, but the reality is that's like one one mm -hmm. sale, I think, maybe two sales. So it yep. looks it looks you can't always just look at ACOS and think, oh, okay, because sometimes you could have a crazy ACOS, but that might have just been off the back of um, you know, like one unprofitable sale. So yeah, it's it's a very long tail uh, term, so a lot of traffic going there. Yeah, so for this, because you haven't got many too many keywords in the in the sheet, then I don't obviously I mean I don't think we need to filter filter around much more, but um, the next thing I would look at, we'll look at this in your broad as well. I like to click the ACOS and go from the top down as well, just to also quickly, quickly get mm -hmm. a view for the worst, the worst offenders. Offenders. Okay. So or should I go back there? You know, yeah. Did you want to have a look at my negative That's keywords at all before we uh, go over there? Um, not necessarily. Cause I mean, presuming if you, if you put them in there based off the info, you should be. I, I think I can trust you <laughs> <laughs> that your negatives are okay. Usually I find the best place for negatives um, is in auto campaigns because that can help mm -hmm. because obviously we can't see the information for an automatic campaign here. But when you look at the customer search term report, you can see the exact, um, you can see the exact things people were looking for in your auto campaigns as well. And you can add negatives to that and you can, you can bring the cost down and improve it as well. So let's have a look in your manual. So this will be a broad, presumably a broad match one. Yeah, so I turned this off uh, a month ago, I think. So there's going to be nothing. For well, this that's month. okay. I mean, we, we can still see what was, uh, as long as it's lifetime, we can still have a look. So let's have a look in the keywords tab. And then we'll do the obviously if we, you know you, you shut everything off but we'll do the same thing uh as we did before so 
we'll start with looking at the spend. I mean, the real work, the, the real thing I always want to check is what keywords have been um, getting a spend, but no, no conversions. Those are the, okay. those are the ones I'm kind of most interested in stopping first. Oh, I mean, okay. usually I let it go to like $5 or $10 and then I, then I'll pause it because that gives me an idea. Okay. So let's see which ones of these go along with Diego. So generally, there's one. Um, obviously, we won't be pausing these or anything because everything's paused. But obviously, the first thing I would do, I'd be, I'd be pausing the first one, two, three, four. Um, the fifth one is coming in okay, and it's got you know more than a few sales and some impressions and stuff as well. So I would leave that one. Um, the only one I shut off. And then I. <laughs> I'll turn it back on. I mean, I'll just follow what you're 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 just saying. Turn that off. Yeah. Um, and then the good thing is that you've got a really nice impression spread. So that's good. That means that um, hashtag plug the listing is you, the keywords are all <laughs> <laughs> the keywords are all kind of uh, Amazon is acknowledging that you, you know you're relevant for these keywords. So that's nice. Good impression spread. So that's really cool. Um, then I yeah, would it should, pause should be mentioned. It should be mentioned that uh, that Dan uh, built my listing, so hence the, uh, yeah. hence the uh, shameless plug. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I would pause the ninety-five percent one. This one, ninety-one. Yeah. Sorry, ninety-one. Yeah. So. Um, I would obviously leave the thirty-two one. That's. I mean, that's pretty good as well. Um, a broad term as well. And kind of a, a weird broad one that's quite good and then i would pause i think i would pause the 63 and i would pause the 83 um as well yeah and i think that's it i think you've got you can go to page two haven't you actually oh. you could oh. oh no no actually it's not that it's not that yeah sorry. i think you can select to show more results per page as well i'll make it, yeah make it a bit, a bit easier so let me go back here sort from spend down and when we, oh, we look at the customer system report in Excel we do the same thing as well so what else have we got yeah I might I might leave the I might leave the the 41 um maybe the so maybe the 43 one I would leave. maybe uh, I mean I think I would pause the 75 pause the I thought, yeah, so obviously the 208 would be um would be paused as well. The tw and then you've got a 29 one, which is um I guess you've had a few sales on that. So that's not yeah, too bad. I might I might leave those. Uh, I mean, they're a little bit high, but uh, there's quite a bit of quite a few impressions there so yeah i mean that one at 43 i'd maybe leave that one because mm -hmm. again the impression good again with a couple of negative reviews that that could get worse and then obviously mm -hmm. those ones you know those guys would definitely uh, get paused i think i'd pause that 46 one as well and then you've got another 30 so that's looking okay all the columns just go uh, go crazy. Let's see how a, a winner there that weren't, a weren't too bad. Which you've paused. I don't know why I paused it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you had you can lead a horse to, to water, but <laughs> <going on. laughs> you just you like a Moth to the to the flame of high A cost. The yes, uh... turn that one. I mean, so you've got so you've got a few. Uh, there's definitely a few winners in at uh, get twelve. Well, the other thing to say too, and of course you say uh, that um, you have to be careful with um, looking at things in too short a time frame. Uh, time is also the moved on so uh it could be that these that these uh these keywords don't perform as, as well now than they, they did at that time possibly possibly yeah. 
but you never you never know um so you've got a few here which have got you twelve dollars twelve dollars twelve dollars spend so obviously you'd want to pause all of those and then you've got an 18 percent aid cost one there which is uh which looks like what one one or a couple of sales but you know better than nothing um and then another spend with with no a cost that's another 11 dollar one so obviously we would pause that all of those yeah all of those uh ones paused so the 18 one's fine and then you've got another two which are quite good again looks like maybe just one sale off each so that could that could turn bad you know quite quickly but still not all of your negative eight costs i mean that's like that 54 percent one to be fair that's only like maybe one off the back of one sale so sometimes yeah. those things yeah. could could get better um mm -hmm. just depend and then those two obviously i would pause <coughs> the seven dollar something in the seven dollar something they're already paused here yeah okay so i think i think we get the i can go through this and uh um so a couple of questions here first of all i kind of uh amped uh, amped up the the numbers here so that i would win the the bids um do you think that that's not a good idea and and rein this in a little more yeah i mean i i try to pay amazon as little money as extra money as possible. Um, so usually I set the bid to maybe ten cents above what it is, just for you know, just so I feel psychologically like I'm not not okay, right so there. 10, but 10, 10 10 above. Above. Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, if I'm feeling lazy, I'll just set the mm -hmm. I'll just set to the suggested bid and roll with that. I mean, like I said, I'm not. Um, you know that really does depend how many keywords i've got if i've got like 200 in there and i have to manually go in and click and add 10 cents in i might just um you know i might just go with the click apply and go with the suggested bit but that's just yeah. me being lazy okay <coughs> okay and the, the other thing so the, the other question that i had on on this uh, particular situation is that i have um 215 total keywords that I put in here, and that was that was this kind of um, well initial spray and pray approach to see what what works, and uh, it was you know it was helpful. But the question is, is there a point where there are too many keywords in here that uh, confuse the algorithm and make it less effective, or is there an optimal well, number? I don't know. I mean, I think it probably depends really on the on the kind of product and stuff. Um, but one thing I see sometimes, like I don't like it when I see a campaign, like a broad thing, and there's a thousand keywords in there or something. Obviously, because first it's a, a pain in the ass to manage, but secondly, is you know the keyword combinations in there. So generally, I mean, I don't think two hundred and fifteen is actually um, too bad because when you've got like longer tail keywords there can be all sorts of different combinations of um you know even the like the sentence structure can be different so they're all kind of it might be like say you have a stainless steel kitchen mm, kitchen <laughs> i was gonna say kitchen mat but that's not even a thing i don't think but we'll say stainless steel uh ice cream scoop you could you could also say you know you've got stainless steel ice cream scoops scoops for ice cream ice cream scooper stainless steel there's just off a few things, you can already get actually sure. You can create many different uh, iterations, yeah, and they can they can all get thrown in there um, and see. But the thing is, with a broad match as well, if you put in against stainless steel ice cream scoop, um, the broad campaign can also include. You'll only see your result, your ACOS based on the keyword. But when you look at the search term report, you'll see that um, the actual customer search term might have been super super size stainless steel stainless steel scoop so that's the difference between say broad and exact where right, right that's why i like broad though because there's more potential for like weird things to come in that you can also look at in your report and then you can add that to new campaigns um if you want to but i think 215 is actually pretty good and i mean as you can see your impression uh, your impression spread is also pretty good because i mean even if you had 200 keywords but you were getting three to five to ten thousand impressions on each one. 
you get this kind of um, aggregate effect, which becomes pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, that adds up rather than if you just had five, you know, say five keywords, um, you're being seen in less places and you've got less chances to convert. So the one thing I will say, though, that I'm not a super fan of, um, I don't like one word keywords, generally speaking. So sometimes, mm -hmm. um, sometimes, like, I, I mean, I see people do quite odd things with campaigns, like they'll have, I mean, they'll divide them up in kind of different interesting ways. Um, but then they'll also do things that, you know, they'll put things like boys, girls, sports, and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, well, there's no, you know, if you're selling uh, like shin pads or, you know, shin guards for, say, I don't know, rugby, you can do kind of all different combinations of like shin guards for hockey and insert the sport name. But when it comes down to like, uh, you know, boys sports, stuff like that, it gets to a point where it's so vague that, you know, it, it very rarely ends up being like any kind of effective. And you have yeah. to watch it closely yeah. as well because it can pull in a lot of weird, inefficient stuff that you need yeah. to um, you, you need to pause and things like that so yeah unless your product is really like good potential impulse buy thing that uh, a lot of people are going to sort of discover and decide to buy uh, you know spur of the moment it's you're going to yeah i mean some be... some things like if you if you were selling um, if you were selling like a pair of earrings or if you were selling maybe um, if you were selling a necklace say you were selling like um, I'm just trying to think something weird's going to come out of my mouth. I'm trying to stop. <laughs> something strange is going to pop out any minute now. Um, if you were <laughs> a crystal necklace uh, or something, so you've got a necklace with a crystal on it, you know your keywords are going to be related to the type of the, you know, like gemstone necklace, crystal necklace, healing necklace. Maybe you could go into some of the, like the esoteric stuff. Um, but you could also have the keyword, which would be gift for, you know, it could be also a gift for your, you know, a gift for wife or something like that. Mm -hmm. But that's the kind of keyword that can, is so crazy broad that it can it can kind of skew the whole campaign in the echo. So something like that, if you wanted to play with it and try that keyword, it might be better put in another campaign type, kind of in isolation, mm -hmm. quarantine, away from the, the relevant stuff, um, you know, just to try. But there's certain things when you kind of, when, when you get vague with them, it can... Uh, you know they they can be relevant, but sometimes they can be so vague that it's almost not worth going after unless you've got some kind of brand name that you can leverage or something. So you could say this is a good wife gift, but I mean, it's also you kind of have to take into account your particular product as well. Um, but yeah, generally I like the, more, the slightly longer two three word key um, keywords key yeah. phrases, longer stuff. I mean, like I said, you do your keyword research, you know you have a rough idea of what people are searching for. So, you know, if I want a crystal necklace, I know I'm going to be in the, you know, it might be a crystal necklace or an amethyst necklace or something. There's only going to be so many, like, logical, normal, relevant things. That's going to kind of be the ballpark that you want to be in, um, really. But I would, like I said, when it, when it gets to, like, 500 keywords in a campaign, I kind of think... it. it it's very difficult to be efficient when you've got so much stuff in there, but you can always, you know, just whittle things down. But usually what, what I see with campaign structures like that is that you still get the 80, 20 rule of, um, you know, 20% of the, of your say 500 keywords are going to bring all the results in sometimes even smaller. It might literally be five keywords or six keywords. Mm -hmm. They do all the work. Um, and then the rest are either rubbish or they're just like super low impressions, or yeah. you don't even get an impression, you just get a little dash, which is which is uh, mm -hmm. like no impression no. at all. Yeah. So you can have lots of keywords, but it doesn't necessarily mean Amazon's gonna uh, like feed you impressions for them. But it's always mm -hmm. nice when you see lots of impressions. And uh, when sellers, one thing I really quickly mention, because it, I, I see it pop up sometimes, when sellers don't get many impressions, sometimes it can be because the listing has too many characters in the in the product um, in the bullets in the you know product features. Mm -hmm. I find if if you ever get that problem, and we'll presume the listing's not you know is is okay. If you shorten the if you shorten the bullets down to two hundred or you know less than a thousand total, something happens and then you'll start um, mm -hmm. you'll start indexing, getting indexed. But mm -hmm. there is a weird thing where I've seen that happen enough times now that 
um, when somebody says, you know, I'm not key, you know, I'm not getting impressions, it tends to be an indexing problem. And the, the, the easiest fix I see that works time and again is cutting down the, the, the bullets, which I don't always like to do if I don't have to, because I mean, like, you know, the more space I, I find like 350 is a good, good place to get enough keywords and stuff in. It's difficult to sell something in, you know, in like a Twitter blurb. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, then especially if it's, if it's a more complex thing. Yeah, but people don't really read the product description. Well, I mean, not many people read them. So it's kind of, I like to, you know, I recommend that if um, if no impressions come in. But other than that, like, I think 215 is quite good. I mean, the impressions are quite good as well. Okay. Let's switch back yeah. to to the uh, full screen. regular view. There we go. So, Dan, this has been really, really good. And I, I mean, my key learning from this has been that um, I need to go back to my uh, my broad campaign and uh, do some cleaning and uh, re-implement it because actually there was some good some good keywords in there that I just wasn't uh, paying enough attention to. And the overall result was poor, but uh, that was actually being skewed by some poor performers and uh, there were actually yeah. some good ones in there so but you could you could also you could also duplicate the broad campaign into a phrase campaign as well and test test throughout that you'd want to keep a real uh, real close eye on that one though because like i said phrases always got the most potential to kind of go crazy yeah okay Awesome. So um, we'll uh, we'll wind uh, wind it up here, and um, and uh, I really thank you, Dan. This has uh, been very helpful. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Thanks. Well, as you can see, my PPC was a bit of a mess. Since we did the changes suggested by Dan, uh, I've seen some good progress in my ranking, and I sit on the first page for most of my primary keywords. I'm still being hurt by my crap reviews, and uh, I've got a new product on the way, new uh, version of my product on the way that should um, fix that in the future. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, Dan has a video series that he provides, um, where he provides a systematic approach to setting up your PPC campaign. Um, it takes you from building keywords into the listing to setting up your campaigns and how to manage them, as well as how to use the customer search term report and troubleshooting the most common problems. Um, with over 30 hours of content, you will get from a PPC newbie to understanding important stuff. You can get access to it for only $35 via the link in the video comments. It's a really great value for getting started on the right foot in PPC. So that's all for today, and I hope you got value from this session, and see you again soon.